Hey guys, it's Jimmy here and welcome back to another video. Now today what we're going to be doing is going through my top 5 favourite cars in sim racing. Something that I've actually wanted to do for quite a while now. Thank you to Luke Stewart for reigniting the idea in my mind. He commented on my video the other day suggesting I do a video like this. So here it is. Um, just a quick disclaimer before I get into this video. I want to say that this list is completely subjective. These are my top 5 favourite cars in sim racing. Not necessarily the best cars in sim racing, but my top 5. So with that in mind, let's move on to the list, shall we? Number 5. The Peugeot 306 Maxi F2 car from Dirt Rally. So we start off this list with what is effectively a front-wheel drive pug. Uh, I guess that's true to an extent, but you also have to take into account that it weighs less than a tonne and produces 300 horsepower from a 2-litre naturally aspirated engine, which effectively makes it a super touring car, and we all know they're awesome. There's just something that feels very right about a pokey front-wheel drive car as you pick your way through Dirt's epic Monty stages, you know. Unlike its rear-wheel drive and four-wheel drive counterparts, you really have to pay attention to your lines. You have to make sure you're taking traditional racing lines to be fast when really you're making the most of all the space on the road, as opposed to those massive drifts you get from the, uh, the other rally cars. That, plus a really quick, really nice, thrilling sequential gearbox makes this thing a proper weapon on tarmac stages and dirt. Also, it sounds fucking awesome. Number 4, the Nissan 300ZX GTO from Raceroom. Now the 300ZX is one of those cars that really requires an understanding of how the car works and produces power in order to drive it fast, or at least competently. Um, the car produces in excess of 600 horsepower at the top of the rev range, which is quite a fair bit. Um, and like all cars of this era, um, it does suffer from horrendous turbo lag. Um, now I actually love the way the turbos are simulated in Race Room, it makes it very rewarding uh, to get the car's characteristics learnt and uh, makes it very satisfying when you actually put a lap together that feels nice and fast. It does also mean though that the car does go from being docile to like a rabid Cthulhu beast in a split second when you put the foot down. Um, all that's going on and you still have to remember to, to heel and toe breath match into every corner and if you aren't sweating after a session in this car then you just aren't doing it right. Number 3, the Nissan GTR LM from R Factor 2. Here's a car that shouldn't work and actually didn't work in real life. Uh, fortunately, in the virtual world, we haven't got to wor worry about pesky things like functioning hybrid systems. Um, the GTR LM is a car that drives, well, wrong, I suppose. Um, I spent a season of VEC in the R18 Audi, so you can imagine my shock when driving this car for the first time. The thing is, though, even though it is effectively a front wheel drive prototype, once you start putting in laps, it begins to make sense. You are constantly battling the front end of this car, both in setup, as the setup you have is always heavily biased to work with those fat front tyres, and in controlling the understeer whilst driving. The car wouldn't be competitive at all if it wasn't for its rocket ship capabilities. Sometimes you're putting almost 20k's difference in top speed between yourself and the next fastest P1 car. This car also means a lot to me sentimentally, as it represents the drive not to go with the crowd, and personally, that means a lot to me. Number 2, the Formula V10 in Automobilista. Those who know me well know that this list wouldn't be complete without some sort of V10 Formula 1 car. Now in my eyes this is the best Formula car available to drive in sim racing, full stop. Racer have perfectly captured the brutality of this era of Formula 1. This is one of the only cars that I would actually recommend running a high level of traction control just to be able to stay on the road. Don't get me wrong though, the learning curve in this car is steep. There is so much power and so much grip that it can almost be intimidating at first. Uh, actually, when I first started driving this car, there was so much power and grip that I couldn't keep up with the performance of the car. I was letting the car down. But once you reach a certain level of competence, the car, it comes alive properly. You can feel every little movement of the car through the tyres, through the force here back in your wheel, and it gives you confidence to push the car even harder, lap after lap after lap.
Number one, the BMW M1 from the DRM mod in R Factor. This car is probably the reason why I'm still sim racing today. Um, back when I first started out on my first wheel, G27, I was sort of half committed to the idea of sim racing as a hobby. Uh, being new to sim racing at all was quite daunting, especially when you were looking at R Factor mods a lot of the time, because a good 70% of R Factor mods are just awful, so sifting through that when you're new is quite difficult. Then I stumbled upon DRM and, for lack of a better term, it transformed my view of sim racing. Driving the M1 on max volume in my headphones gave me goosebumps. The first time you drive this car, you will crash, be it on power or under braking, but you will crash. Then of course you have to manage the turbo, running it too high will end your race very early because it will just blow up, and also you have to hear the tow and rev max as well because it's an old age pattern gearbox. All of this, whilst trying to compete for position with other various silly race cars on track, is pretty much my definition of what sim racing should be, hence why it's my number one. Well there you are then guys, my top 5 favourite cars in sim racing. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Um, videos like this do take a little bit longer to put together and produce, so if you did enjoy it then by all means hit that like button of course and make me happy inside. I'm interested to hear your own opinions on what your favourite car is, so add that to the comments below if you want to do that. And of course subscribe to be notified of future videos. So take care guys, have an awesome day and I'll see you all next time.